section sixty nine of up one pair of stairs of my book house this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by candace stalick dallas texas up one pair of stairs of my book house edited by olive the pure miller betsy ross and the first american flag many many years ago there was no united states at all but just thirteen little colonies along the atlantic ocean ruled over by a king who lived across the sea in england in those days there lived in philadelphia a good woman named betsy ross betsy had a little old-fashioned red brick house with tiny window panes and a great front door with a shiny brass knocker the prim quaint little quaker ladies of philadelphia often came and rapped with that knocker for betsy was a dressmaker and she made these ladies their trim gray gowns the finest needlewoman in all america she had been called one fine june day betsy sat by her window in a high back chair with her feet on a footstool she was sewing busily and her big black cat powder was beside her playing with a spool on the floor all at once she heard the sound of fifes and drums troops coming powder she cried and laying her work aside she hurried to the front door there on her doorstep she stood waving her handkerchief while a regiment of soldiers marched by awkward enough were the men as though they had little training many were not even in uniform yet all betsy's neighbors stood on their doorsteps just as she did and cheered them for at that time the thirteen little american colonies had suffered great wrong from the king of england and those who helped him govern be a king george the king's mother had taught him when he was a boy and he had grown to believe that the only way to be a king was to make others do whatever he willed whether or not it was right or just year after year the wrong he had done the american colonists had grown greater till at last there was nothing for brave men to do but stand with courage and fight for their freedom so these troops marching past betsy's house had left their peaceful homes and their dear ones to help drive out of their country the soldiers of the king hurrah three cheers for the brave men from virginia cried the people but as betsy turned to go into the house a neighbor called to her what a shame that we have no flag for our troops ay truly sir answered betsy since we hauled down the flag of england we sadly need one of our own scarcely had she settled herself at her work again when suddenly there came a loud rapping at her door as she hastened to open it with powder close by her side whom should she see before her but general washington himself accompanied by two other men betsy hastened to drop a curtsey a fine summer's day mistress ross said washington in his pleasant voice we come to you on important business at once betsy led the men into her quiet little back parlor which looked out on the side yard and there she begged them to tell her their errand congress has just accepted a design for the flag we need so sadly said washington and we have come to you to see if you can bank it for us betsy's face lit up with pleasure i shall try my best she answered then general washington took from his pocket a paper on which was a drawing see he said there are to be thirteen stripes seven red ones and six white ones and in the upper left-hand corner there will be a blue field with a circle of thirteen white stars one star for each of our thirteen good colonies betsy studied the drawing with interest then she said the design is a good one but why have the stars six points i see no reason for that ah answered general washington the stars we have known so long on shields and coats of arms in england are always made with six points for washington did not forget that his fathers had come from england though he led the american troops with all his heart against the soldiers of the king he had not ceased to love the english people and he liked the star that reminded him of the land across the sea if six pointed stars are english all the more reason why ours should be different cried betsy with spirit here in america we start afresh we look at things with our own eyes not with the eyes of our fathers who lived in england the real stars the stars in the sky 
seem always to have but five points it is not better to place on our flag the stars as they really appear in the sky rather than as men have drawn them for ages on dusty old shields in england general washington's face was grave he still did not find it easy to part with the six-pointed star i doubt very much he said if you will be able to cut a perfect five-pointed star betsy hurried into the next room soon she returned with her work basket taking out a square piece of paper she folded it quickly and cut it with one snip of her scissors then opening it she held up triumphantly a perfect five-pointed star the men with washington smiled you are defeated general they cried and even powder jumped up with his forepaws against his mistress's knees as though to say she had well done then an answering smile lit up washington's face so be it he agreed as he rose to go let america's star be hers alone a shining light for all the world five pointed like the stars in the sky thus it was that betsy ross made the first flag of our country the first stars and stripes as time went by americans saw the stars and stripes go forth again and again to do battle with wrong and to uphold the right so they grew to love it still more dearly and to understand more of its meaning the stars on the blue field that have grown far beyond the thirteen of betsy's day stand for all the states in this great union shining out into the world with the light of freedom and justice the thirteen stripes stand for the thirteen little colonies that first fought so nobly for freedom the red says to all be brave the white says be pure the blue says be true so today, when the flag goes by it is not the beautiful colors we bear our heads to salute but the courage the truth and purity the true idea of freedom for which old glory stands end of section sixty nine recording by candace Delic, dallas texas